Hey, what's going on guys? Your boy Chosen Mighty here and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to catch big smallmouth bass. I'm going to give you guys my top five lures in order from most efficient to least efficient. We'll talk about location, time of day, and much, much more. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the meat and potatoes. We're going to start by talking about the most important aspect, location. When it comes to fishing for bass, real estate and bass really aren't that different. It comes down to location, location, location. The best place to find big smallmouth bass are in shoals. For those of you who don't know what shoals are, I'll go ahead and put a visual representation on screen and I'll try to describe it as best I can. Shoals are basically any place you think you should be trout fishing. So shallow, clear, quick moving water with rocky bottom and slight drop offs with eddies where fish can ambush. That's where you're gonna find your two to three to five pound smallmouth. So now you know where to fish, so let's talk about what you fish with. Here are the top five lures to catch big smallmouth bass. Number one is the Chapo or Whopper Plopper. The Whopper Plopper or Berkeley's Chapo is my go-to lure when I'm fishing for big smallmouth. It's a top water lure that makes a lot of noise and causes a lot of reaction strikes. It mimics a dying bait fish on the top water and like I said, it makes a ton of sound. Smallmouth that are sitting waiting to ambush are going to be looking up. They're waiting for any bait fish to pour over the rocks, really anything that's overtaken by the current. Usually when using the chop bell, you'll get a hit within the first three seconds of it hitting the water. So let's talk about the retrieve. You can work the chop a few different ways. I prefer the constant retrieve. I would say for top water, at least the chop it's about the medium action. But when you're in really fast moving water, you're going to want to burn it as much as possible. When the water's kind of dead or at least slow moving, the medium action is my favorite just a constant retrieve. Some people, especially YouTubers, will mix up their action on the top waters like this and they'll do a burn and stop. This does work, it will get you bites, but I've found that the constant action tends to get me my best bites. Another key aspect that you're gonna wanna keep in mind is the fact that you need to fish upstream. It's the most natural presentation to smallmouth. It doesn't look natural when a fish is going against the current, especially one that's supposed to be a dying bait fish. It's gonna appear way more natural to fish if you're fishing up current and bringing it back down towards them. That way it will trick them into thinking that it's actually a dying bait fish going downstream coming down the river and that's when you're going to get your reaction strike. Now you're going to want to know where to place them. Smallmouth are ambush predators so they're going to be sitting on the drop-offs from the rapids right next to the rocks where the water starts to pour in. Sometimes they'll even be in grass beds but a majority of your bites are going to come almost right at the waterfall at least where the water falls over the rapid. There's plenty of oxygen in the water there and they can wait for the food to come to them. When you're not getting bites in the rapids you're you're gonna want to try the yetis. Jeremy Wade said that the river is like a conveyor belt and if you know where to sit the food will come to you. So sometimes smallmouth will sit in the yetis. They're gonna be sitting on the line between the slack water and the moving water where current is minimum but food is maximum and that's where you'll get your bites. So if the chopo's not doing it in the rapids try the yetis, work the area, find the fish. Number two on our best lures for smallmouth fishing has to be the spook. It's a big presentation on the top water. This also mimics a dying bait fish and this will get blown up. There's really only one way to work a spook and that's the walking action. You do that by keeping your rod tip low and twitching. You want to pop and stop or pop and pause to get that walking action going. It will take a little bit to get used to but once you get it it's pretty much cake. However because you have to work it in the walking action style you cannot throw the spook in rapids. So this is where you've got your slower moving water, water that's still moving, but isn't nearly at the speed of the shoals. You can still use it at the shoals, but you're gonna need to find some slow moving water, at least slower. This is for those fish that aren't sitting on the shoals themselves, but are sitting behind rocks, in grass beds, and stuff like that. Of course, once you get used to the walking action, you can throw it almost anywhere. Just try out some different spots and see where you can actually get the action to work. Again, because this is mimicking a dying bait fish, you're gonna wanna fish this lure upstream. That's gonna give you your best presentation and your best chance at getting a big smallmouth. Number three on our list for big smallmouth fishing is the popper. Now, I know what you guys are thinking, but Logan, all of these are topwaters. That may be true, but not only do these get you big fish, it is one of the coolest ways to catch big fish. I mean, what other method of fishing do you get to see the giant fish hit your lure? It's so fun. So let's talk about where you're gonna use the popper and how you're gonna use the popper. Poppers are primarily used in slow, shallow, clear moving water. Any type of body of water that resists simple as a creek is your best bet to get a bite on the popper. It mimics a dying bait fish, of course, on the top water, and is the perfect lure for any of those fish that are pushing up into creeks or areas like creeks looking for small bait fish to eat. Anytime that I see an eddy or an area of slow moving water that's still moving with a consistent rate that has bubbles, I use the popper. So now that you know where to use the popper, let's talk about how to use the popper. I've often said that the popper is the finesse of the top water. At most, you're going to want to twitch, twitch, and stop. This is a really slow 
moving action. A lot of people have the misconception that you want to push as much water as possible, but I've found that I get the best bite on subtle twitches. That way it looks more like a twitching bait fish dying on the top water. And when you achieve that look, that's when you're going to get your big small mouth to hit it. This is another lure that you're going to want to try to work upstream because like I said, it is mimicking a dying bait fish. So it's going to appear more natural if it's twitching and floating downstream. And that's pretty much all you need to know about the popper. So without further ado, let's go ahead and move on to number four on our list. Number four is the chatterbait. The chatterbait is the first lure that ever caught a giant smallmouth on. Giant meaning two pounds. But when I just started fishing, that was a giant smallmouth. The chatterbait also holds the title for the largest largemouth I've ever caught either. And that was a river largie. But the chatterbait is perfect for smallmouth. And here's why. 70% of all smallmouth diet is crawdads. So putting a crawl trailer on your chatterbait is literally the wombo combo. To be fair, you can put any trailer you want on the chatterbait. But personally, I get my best action on crawls. And specifically, crawl chunks. My recommendation is yum, especially for guys who are just starting out. It's cheap and has a really good action, but the color is more important than the craw itself. I get the most bites on natural looking colors. So that's your browns, your pumpkin seeds, anything similar to that. But you can also try black and blue that's also had a good success rate for me and is good for murkier water. It stands out, there's more of a silhouette, and that's actually what I caught that largemouth on. You can use a chatterbait almost anywhere, and you can work it a few different ways. You can do a straight retrieve, but I found that the best action comes on a slower retrieve with a few twitches. That lets your trailer dance a little bit more in the water, the skirt moves more, and if you're using crawl trailers, it looks like a more natural presentation. Like I said, you can throw a chatterbait almost anywhere, but when it comes to really murky water, the chatterbait really shines. Chatterbaits have a blade on the front that vibrates. That vibration is gonna cause fish to pick it up with their lateral lines. So when it's harder for a fish to see, throw a chatterbait. But when chatterbaits aren't working in the murky conditions, you can try the lure on our number five spot. Number five goes to spinners and swim baits. These are the first soft plastics that I ever used catching smallmouth bass, and for good reason. You can throw spinners in about any condition of water, but they're especially good when the water is really murky. Even when the water is stained, the spinner will shine, literally. Bass are sight predators. You can tell this because their eyes are so big proportionally to the size of their face. So that little extra flash from the spinner blade will help the bass key in on your lure. Spinners are great for creeks, slow moving water, and anything that's stained. They'll catch walleye, smallmouth, largemouth, literally anything in the rivers. They work really well when the bite's really slow. And that's why they're our number five pick for top five lures to catch big smallmouth bass. So there you have it guys, that's our list. If you guys found this video entertaining or helpful in any way, be sure to hit that like button. And if you have any follow-up questions or comments, be sure to leave them down in the comment section below. But that's all I have for you guys. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button below, comment, rate, subscribe, do what you guys do, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a toad. That is a freaking chunk, dude. I gotta get him.